In 2015, Minnesota was among the initial adopters of right to try legislation, which allows terminally ill patients to access experimental therapies before they have been approved by the FDA. In May, President Donald Trump signed a federal right to try bill into law. Representative Nick Zerwas was at the signing ceremony, and he now joins me in the studio to talk more about this issue. Welcome. Thank you for so much for having me. You carried this bill in Minnesota in 2015 in part because it has personal significance for you. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I was born in 1980 with a severe critical uh, conge congenital heart defect. I was born without my right ventricle. Um, at the time, in 1980, uh, patients born with tricuspid atresia were expected to live to be about six or seven years old. By the time I was six or seven years old, I had had two previous open heart surgeries, but there was really nothing else um, that had proven to be successful. And uh, it was at that time that my surgeon and my cardiologist came to my family and said, there's a new surgery, it's experimental. We've tried it one other time in Minnesota on a six-year-old girl from Duluth. However, she didn't survive uh, the surgery, but it would be your son's only hope. And so my parents in 1988 decided to give me a chance and decided to give me um, a shot. And so they signed me up and said, yep, we're gonna try this surgery. And uh, they went in, they reconfigured how uh, blood flowed through my heart, now my heart uh, beat. And so then I was out of the hospital in seven days, um, started back in first grade uh, following that surgery. And, and that's been now 31 years uh, later. And so, um, I've had, I feel like I've had my shot. I've had my chance for a miracle. And so when I heard about uh, this bill, when Senator Brandon Peterson in 2015 brought this idea to me, um, I really felt like this was, a ch was my opportunity to give other patients in Minnesota a chance for their miracle. And so the law that now exists did not exist when this procedure happened for you when this experimental treatment saved your life, you were able to, to still access it. So why is the law necessary? Yep, I think the challenge is what the FDA mostly uh, covers is experimental drugs and medical devices that haven't cleared the final, uh, the final hoops of that FDA process. And so mine being a surgical procedure, um, they called it a Fontan revision. And basically what uh, Dr. Nikoloff, who is my heart surgeon did was take um, cortex pieces of, of rubberized fabric and recreate the right side uh, of my heart and allow that uh, to function autonomously uh, from the left. Very cutting edge, but it didn't require a device or a medication that would be directly uh, regulated by the FDA. And so in some ways I'm here because that procedure was not tightly regulated by the federal government. It was between a provider and a patient and their family, and the provider said, I think this is worth trying, and my family said, yes, let's give it a shot. And so because yours was more of a mechanical type deal as opposed to something the FDA regulates, that's why it worked for you. Exactly. Now, this new law will work for devices. It'll work for pharmaceutical uh, drugs and things. Do you think this law, though, would give those companies and those manufacturers too much power? Could people get hurt? I think what we talk about when we talk about right to try is, is we, we talk about the patients and there were several patients at the signing who had had to go to Europe or to Israel uh, to take experimental um, in America approved in, in those European countries and in Israel uh, medication specific for um, aggressive forms of multiple sclerosis, aggressive forms of ALS and um, aggressive pediatric cancers. Um, and so what we're seeing is we're seeing an approval process in other parts of the world that are much quicker and much faster than the FDA, which could take 10 to 15 years uh, for a drug to work all the way through the process. This is saying once it's a, uh, reached the first hurdle of that phase one to prove that it doesn't directly cause harm to a patient, that if a patient, their care provider, and the drug manufacturer or all in agreement that this is the right course of action uh, for a patient, that this option pe should be left open to them. And it really takes um, the federal government out of that relationship, which I think is a really important step. 
How will an informed MASA patient be to undergo one of these experimental drugs or procedures? And is it appropriate for children? You were a child when, when this happened to you, and you mentioned you know, pediatric cancers. There's some risk here. How do we weigh the risk versus the benefit? I think that's a really fair question. Um, I think as we talk about this patient population, understand that we're talking about patients that have been diagnosed with a terminal illness um, where their life expectancy is generally under a year. For me, I was a seven-year-old boy who um, knew that every day I woke up, I felt sicker than the day before until I got to the point where I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs and my best friend in the world was Ryan Ebert. And Ryan lived across the street from me in Elk River. Not a big deal until the day I no longer had the energy to walk across the street. Um, and so my parents came to me after meeting with a doctor and they said, Nick, there's a new surgery that we want to uh, think about trying, but it's never been done before. And so we don't know if it will be effective um, or if it'll work. And I, and I looked at my dad and I said, I just want to feel better. I'm tired of feeling sick. And so I think for every family, this decision looks different. Um, and, it, and it might not be the right decision for every patient and every family. But for the patients and for the families that this is the right decision for, we ought to give them the option. And we ought to give them a choice in whether or not trying something is, is what's right for them and their family. So what did it mean to you to be in Washington, D.C. when President Trump signed this bill into law? You know, it was kind of a whirlwind. I got an email on a Tuesday telling me to be there at 10 a.m. Wednesday morning. <laughs> so I called my wife and it said, hey, sorry, but I just booked a flight, <laughs> drove to the airport, uh, flew to Washington, D.C. Um, but it really was surreal to be there after um, being one of the first states to pass it back in 2015, now 40 states have passed it, to be called out by President Trump and to stand up and he acknowledged the work we did in, in Minnesota. Um, it, was, it was really moving. And I'll tell you what, I was blown away uh, by the president and his ability uh, to connect with those patients and to connect with those families uh, while he was there. It was a really moving experience. Rep Representative Zerwas, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.